Today's WTF episode is available on the TDG community website. Click on Para Platform Bank, select Flow, and it is this flow here. Happy flowing! Hi everyone, it's Benita here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's WTF episode, I'm really excited to show you how you can identify a context time zone in CDS using Flow. So in terms of the agenda, this is an advanced level topic and I'm going to show you how you can perform this in Flow. Zero code is needed. You are simply using actions and an expression and we are also going to use one of the Bing Maps connector. So let's jump straight into it right now. Okay, so in terms of what's available in Bing Maps, there is there are several Bing Maps connectors that you can use, but before I show you the Bing Maps connector that I will use in this flow, I'm gonna click over to the Bing Maps blog and there is a Bing Maps time zone API which will return the time zone information based on a location provided. Now, if you scroll up, and I will provide this link in my blog post, so make sure you go ahead and check it out, you can use a um, place, so in other words, a string, so for example, the city. But for me personally, I think that if you have the long, if you have the latitude and the longitude of a place, it's more accurate, and I think it's less risky. And, well, that's that's my personal opinion. So I'm going to show you how you can do this simply using the latitude and longitude of an address. And to get the longitude and latitude of an address using a contacts address information there is a Bing Maps connector that we can use that is available today and the Bing Maps connector that you want to use is get location by address so when you select this it will now present a bunch of fields that you can go ahead and reference the CDS address fields which is what I'm going to do now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use that time zone API from Bing Maps. Now to do that, there is a different connector that we want to use called HTTP. And the method that we are using is get because we're getting information from the API. And in here, this is where you can insert the URL that is provided in the Bing Maps blog. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this URL now and we're going to paste it in here. And so in the URL they have reference sample data. So I want to replace this with the result of the latitude and longitude return from this action from this Bing Maps connector. So when I click on see more, it will now present some outputs that you can use. And I'm going to select the latitude, and then I'm also going to select the longitude. Now, in this part of the, um, the URL, you need, to and you need to insert your Bing Maps key. So I signed up for a Bing Maps key. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that now and paste it into my flow action. All right, so then we go ahead and click save. Okay, so now that I've done that, we can go ahead and test this out to see that the time zone will be identified of the contact. So I'm going to head over to my model driven app and I'm going to create a contact using an address from New Zealand represent okay so now my contact in my model driven app has been created we will head over to flow and we will see that the flow has 
in Patrick Gary. Okay, so this is the result here, and it's run successfully. Hooray! Okay, so in this action, it can see that I've entered in some details, um, and that's retrieving it from the contact record in CES. And this is the output that it's recognized. And then in terms of my HTTP action, we can see that a response has been returned. So I'm going to dump this into Notepad++ so I can show you what it looks like. So the response return is it's showing um, an array here and then it's showing that there's an object and in the time zone object we have the property of Windows time zone ID and this is how you can identify a context time zone in CDS. Now if you wanted to store this value in CDS you can, you just need to create a new field and then retrieve this value from the JSON returned. Okay, so I'm gonna show you two ways how you can retrieve this from the response. So the first method is you can use the parse JSON action. So I'll talk about this now. So in the parse JSON um, action, you simply reference the body. So the body is from this action. And then here it's asking you for a schema. So when you click this, in here is where you would enter in the JSON from um, the previous result. So now if I click done, it will go ahead and generate a schema for me. So again, I'm gonna copy and paste this into Notepad++ so I can show you what it looks like. So that's the schema that it has generated. Cool, all right. So then the next thing that you can do is you can add in a new step called compose because this way we need to retrieve the um, that Windows time zone ID property from the time zone object. Now, when you scroll down um, over on the right hand side, in terms of the, um, the view fields, so you can select in here, no, I shouldn't say fields, but I'm gonna use fields anyway, so I can't, I can't think of the right term right now. Um, you'll notice that you can't select the time zone and that's because the time zone is an object within an array and it's in the array of resources. So once I click on resources, what's gonna happen is it's gonna do this apply to each. It is something that is going to simply appear. So um, I'm gonna talk, sorry, pause briefly here. So John Liu, who's another MVP, he has a blog that goes through the different um, things that you need to be aware of when you are using the parse JSON action, which I will provide as a link in my blog post and so make sure you go ahead and check that out. Now, it's not entirely wrong. And by using this method, it allows you to find that Windows time zone ID pretty easily. But as you can see, it's going to keep doing this unlock of apply to each. Now that is not a bad thing. And after that, this is where you can enter, um, enter in your add action to go and update the common data service field that you created that will represent the time zone of the contact. The other method that I will show you now is if you want to not use this apply to each, and if you want to use an expression. So I'm gonna delete this now. And you can use a compose action. So I actually learned this from John. So John, um, I just wanna say thank you. So I'm gonna delete this action as well because we don't need it anymore. So in here, 
this is where we can now simply retrieve the Windows time zone ID by simply using an expression. So in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reference my body action. So just going to get rid of that. And then we are simply going to reference the arrays. So if I flick over back to here, we're going to go from resource sets to resources to the time zone object and then we're going to go ahead and grab the Windows time zone ID property from the JSON response that returns it. So this is what we're doing now. Okay, so then um, the next object is my time zone. And then the property that we are referencing is the Windows Time Zone ID. So going backwards, so let me try and explain this. So I'm grabbing the Windows Time Zone ID property from the object of Time Zone, which is in the array called Resources, whose parent is Resource Sets. I hope that makes sense. All right. So then from here, you can create a new step that will go ahead and update your custom field that has been created. So I'm going to select update a record. So this is the custom field that I created. So I'm going to select um, output and then I'm going to click save. Cool, so that has saved. So now let's create a brand new contact. And I'll show you the custom uh, time zone of contact field that I created. So it lives in my details tab and this is the field. Okay, so now let's go back into Flow and check that this has executed. Oh, this failed and is probably because I wrote the expression wrong. Uh, so let's have a look. Oh, okay. I accidentally put in S. I don't think an S is in there. Let me just double check. Yep, resource set, so that's the problem. All right, let's try that again. So I'm going to reference that same record that triggered my flow. And hopefully this time it should run. And as you can see, I don't always get my expressions right. I sometimes make a mistake. Okay. All right, so it has retrieved New Zealand Standard Time. So again, if I show you the JSON response, um, the value in the property Windows Time Zone ID is New Zealand Standard Time. So this is what it has successfully retrieved. And then when we have a look at um, the record back in CVS, we should see that the field has been updated. So I'm going to refresh now and we'll go ahead and click on the details tab and in here you should see that value populated yay okay so to recap what we did in flow oops sorry was that we simply use an existing bing max connector called get location by address and in here, this is where we reference the address field from the contact entity in CVS. The next action that we used is the HTTP action, where we reference the time zone API from the Bing Mapped blog, which is this one. And you simply reference the latitude and longitude return from your Bing Mapped action up here and you insert your Bing Maps API key. And then in this action, we use the compose action and we simply used an expression 
that would go ahead and retrieve the Windows time zone ID property from the time zone object, which will then update the time zone of contact field back in CES. Stay tuned because I'm going to show you why this is valuable and the next WTF episode is solving a problem that has existed since forever. Thank you everyone who has subscribed to my YouTube channel as of last year. Don't forget that if I make 500 subscribers, the wonderful William from TDG will make a shepherd's pie to celebrate my 500 subscribers. So yeah, thank you so much. Um, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, follow my YouTube channel of course, and I also have my own blog, so make sure you check it out because I will provide links to the Bing Match blog that you have seen today well as John Lee's blog post as well. And yeah, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye! Let's go!